All right, so the nervous system. This is a huge chapter with tons of anatomy that I'm going to want you to uh, understand very, very well because it's going to make the pathology so much easier. It's just going to make sense once you know the anatomy. There's also going to be some new terms you're going to have to learn. Unfortunately, you're just going to have to memorize them and uh, suck it up. So before we get into the details, I just want to take you through a brief overview of the nervous system. We need to sit back, don't even have to memorize anything. We're going to cover everything again many times. And just I want you to understand the big picture of the nervous system. So before we'll start with little cells though first. This is the brain cells, multiple brain cells, not only neurons, there's other support cells. These can all go crazy and turn into brain cancer. Looking specifically at the neurons, we have nerves. Um, there's a lot of delicate physiology associated with these. They have myelination, they have action potentials, and we're going to see what goes wrong there. Next, we're going to look at the development of the brain and what happens when this development goes awry. Uh, we're going to zoom out now from the little cells, and we're going to look at the central nervous system, which includes the brain and the spinal cord. So the very outer layer is the cerebral cortex. This is basically all the higher level functions of your brain, including your personality, your decision making, your speech. Um, and then we're gonna, after that, we're going to delve deeper into the deep parts of the brain. So we were at the outer layer, and now we're going to be the deep layer. There's the thalamus here. The next one is the hypothalamus. And then we have the limbic system as a whole, which is all the colored structures that we see depicted in the brain. Um, and then next, we're going to look at the cerebellum. This is a movement and, uh, and gait type of stuff. It helps you um, coordinate your movement. Um, after, after that, we're going to look at the basal ganglia. This is also movement. Um, when this goes wrong, when this gets damaged, you can get diseases like Parkinson's disease. Next is the brain stem, which is a little lower. It's the stem of the brain. It's involved in vital functions of your body, like breathing, heartbeats. So if the brain stem stops working, your heart stops working, and then you die. Next, we're going to look at the cranial nerves. These originate from the brain stem and go all over your face. They have functions including sensation and motor, as well as parasympathetics. So like salivation and um, others. Next, we're going to follow the brainstem down and it's going to become the spinal cord. Remember, the spinal cord is also part of the central nervous system. The spinal cord is going to supply um, these nerves to the whole body. And then we're going to look at the anatomy and everything that can go wrong there. Next is the vasculature of the brain. There's a couple key vessels that are involved in the, uh, that supply the brain. We're going to see what happens when they become occluded. That's basically a stroke. And then we're also going to look at other possible things, possible bleeding that can go wrong in the brain. Next is the ventricles, which secrete and allow CSF to flow, that's cerebral spinal fluid. And then when that gets blocked up, that becomes something called hydrocephalus. Um, after this, we're going to look at a couple miscellaneous things associated with the nervous system, um, including the headaches, meningitis, seizures, sleep, neurocutaneous, neurocutaneous syndromes, ear pathology, and eye pathology. Alright, so a little broad overview of the nervous system function and pathology. The nervous system is basically the control center of the, bla the brain. So everything you want to do happens up in the nervous system. Any planning, thinking, cognition. Um, your five senses are from the nervous system. Muscle movements, your autonomic nervous system, which includes your uh, fight or flight responses and rest and digest responses of the entire body are all... Um, all controlled by the nervous system. And when that goes wrong, when you get deficits, you can either have focal or global neurological deficits. As the name implies, focal neurological deficits can be traced back to a specific location in the nervous system. So it's focal. And we're going to understand each and every part of the nervous system so that you'll be able to identify, so you will be able to identify which part was damaged. Next is the global neurological deficits. These cannot be traced to a specific location. Um, they present a wide ranging spectrum of deficits, um, just showing damage to the nervous system, um, to many parts of the nervous system. Alright, so we've finished with our little overview. Um, now we're going to delve into little details.